power platform licensing is so expensive, it doesn't have to be. I'm speaking with Michael Morrison, a solutions architect who explains to customers every day all the ways that they could save on licensing. Because you have more options than just this. We're going to show you five different ways you can help your company save money. There's going to be random forest backgrounds, phones flipping. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's jump into it. Mike. Thanks so much for being with us. You betcha, Sean. I'm glad you asked me to do this. So, Mike, when customers get confused, what are they confused about when they come to you? I'll give you an example. So, like, I've I've worked with some park services and stuff that built power apps. Mm -hmm. And and the rangers have to go inspect campsites, and they'll make notes on their power app, on their cellular Mm -hmm. phone. I've seen from customers, it's like, well, it's going to cost me $20 per user. It's like, well, no, it's not necessarily $20 per user per month. So the, the solution then would be to deploy the app into an environment where they can all use it and then get app passes, the $5 per user per month for all the field workers. What Michael just talked about is the per app license. It's one of the three power apps license types, but you wouldn't know that if you just went to the Power Apps pricing page because they only show you the per user license. But if you scroll down, there's a link right here to the Power Platform licensing guide. Don't get me wrong, the per user license is great. It gives you everything for $20 a month per user. The per app license gives you almost the same, but just to one app, but it only costs $5 a month. But what does per app mean? Let's pretend you have two environments, QA and prod. And in QA, you have a Canvas app and you have the same one in Prod. And you have a project manager who's testing the app in QA and also in Prod. And you have some account executive who's only cares about the Prod version and real data. How many per app licenses do you need? This tricks a lot of makers. They think, okay, I have two users all using one app, so that's two licenses, right? Not quite. The account executive needs one license because he's using the one app in prod, but the project manager needs two licenses because there's two versions of the app, one in QA and one in prod. So what are they paying for all this? They're paying $15 a month because it's three licenses, five bucks each, which is way better than using a per user license where your costs are $40 a month, $20 each. Here's a little tip that could cut your costs in half. So I have a model-driven app here, and then I have this awesome Canvas app here. Technically, those are two apps, so five bucks each per user. But why should they be two apps? Instead of making a Canvas app, why don't you instead make a custom page? And then it's like your Canvas app is embedded inside your model-driven app, and that counts as one app. Boom, cost cut in half. We discuss per app, per user. Let's see how Michael saves money with Azure Pay As You Go. Where are customers overpaying and they could save a lot of money? There's people that do, uh, companies I've worked with, they're doing HR onboarding apps. Mm -hmm. And that's only run one time when a new hire is is brought on. They may have some other apps that they run, but that onboarding app, then it's like $10 per user per month. And they just pay for that being Azure. Rather than license them for the whole month for, you know, a year when the commitment with the NCE, right? Power Apps Pay As You Go was hard for me to wrap my head around the first time. Now, Michael gave a great example where there's one app only sometimes used. Let's look at this one. We've got the Canvas app from earlier, and we have another model-driven app in our environment. And let's say we have some other Canvas app here, too. And each month we have a different amount of people using each app. In the first month, we got a couple people who've logged in to use this app, three have logged into this, and four have logged into this. So our total active users is nine active users. Month number two, all of the users are on paternity leave or some European country where they actually have really good benefits. And so the active usage was zero for that month. And then month three, a bunch of them are still on paternity leave. So these two users have to use all of the different apps. Even if it's the same two users across all the apps, that still counts as six different apps. So if we calculate the cost, we'll see that two active users and three, then four totals up to $90 that month. Remember, pay as you go is $10 per user per month. So even if a user logs in accidentally and is like, oh, whoops, wrong app, Boom, $10 out of your pocket. The next month, while everyone was on vacation, it was $0 a month. 
and then having those two users do everything totaled up to $60 a month. But what if instead we took all nine users and we gave them the per app license? Over the course of three months, what would be cheaper here? The per app or pay as you go? It's actually the per app. In this case, nine users times five bucks is $45 a month. The next month is also $45. And of course, the month after that is $45. Now, even when Michael has customers ready to use per user, he still starts them on the pay as you go, especially if they're not really sure what they're going to do. So with the Azure, we can spin it up there and do a trial run and see what the uptake is on that. And then that'll give us a base level count to say, oh, it's probably going to be 50 to 80 users that run it. So we're going to see what their licenses are. If you start looking online, a common way people suggest to save money is to avoid the premium connectors. If you're trying to do one-off actions or simpler operations like avoiding premium connectors in Power Automate, there's some great tutorials. Damien Bird has some great ones, and there are many others. But when you start looking at the data level, it gets more complicated. Some people suggest taking something that requires a premium connector like SQL and just moving all your data into SharePoint. And then your Canvas app or Power Automate talks to that. And that works, but here's what Michael says to watch out for. With that, wherever that date source data is coming from, that's liable to be changed over time. So you still need to add some syncing. So mm -hmm. then you have to look at, well, I'm going to try to avoid a premium license here by exporting this set of table into my SharePoint list, right? Um, you could do that. You could probably do that, you know, with free tools, right? With no cost. But someone has to then run that. So that's... Right. That's sort of the toss up, right? We've got two more tips for you on saving on a licensing cost. But before that, if you need more licensing help or just Power Platform Consulting in general, check out Michael Morrison and TD Synax. Their information is in the description. And if you're interested in becoming a solutions architect and solving these kinds of problems and solving technical problems, be sure to check out our free training. That's in the description too. Can you please explain the dataverse with Teams? Okay, so when you deploy a, a Power Apps for Teams, so if you build a solution, mm -hmm. right? And you can, you can embed the solution uh, into Teams, mm -hmm. and then that gives you a dataverse, but you don't need premium unless you're talking to SQL Server or something like that. Now, your dataverse size is limited to two gigs. So uh, we have some apps that, that our internal teams are using it's got a dataverse in it. And we know that once that dataverse grows bigger than two gigs, we're going to have to do premium licensing on it. That's from Aurora. Aurora's nice guy. I've been conversing with him on Teams for some time now. He is the Microsoft Solutions Architect Manager for Asia Pacific. Okay. So he puts a lot of these graphics out. that kind of covers the licensing structures. And I'm going to share the link for that. It's a very complex licensing structure. And the good, the bad thing is it's complex. The good thing is, is with understanding all these permutations of licensing options uh, that we've been talking about, it allows customers to uh, reduce their expense for running Power Apps and Power Automate. Here's another tip. If you are interested in using AI better, you automatically get 500 credits if you do get the premium account, but it's 500 per unit per month if you don't have an account or want more. Or you can use Azure AI Document Intelligence, where the first 500 pages are free, and the pricing in general is much less than 500. We're so grateful to Michael Morrison for stopping by. Be sure to follow him on LinkedIn. But there's one thing we didn't talk about as much, and that's service accounts, meaning you have one account with a license that can run a bunch of Power Automate flows instead of you having to give licenses to all the users. That can be dangerous and can lead to multiplexing, which we're going to unpack in our next video.